Hey, everyone. Welcome to the Distance Friday. Hooray. Uh, I totally knew that we were going to be in distance and didn't have a lab planned and everything. And this is uh, 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 done. Uh, this is completely planned. Everything's planned. Everything's fine. Uh, yep. So anyways, we were planning on doing a lab today, but uh, you guys aren't here. Um, so there's that. Who boy. So I had to, basically, I'm just moving things around a little bit. Um, so this is going to be the lecture for 5.4. Um, what I want you to do today is watch the, the videos on 5.4 and do the assign the, uh, the topic questions that are assigned on, um, on there. Uh, don't worry uh, about doing any other problems or anything like that. Uh, just go through and get, make sure you get your topic questions done. Um, yeah. Okay. But definitely go through and watch them. We are going to go through uh, on Monday whenever we have uh, when I'm a, a bit more put together. Uh, we're going to go through and talk more about it uh, then. All right. Probably whenever we have Teams meetings. I have I assume we're going to have a Teams meeting. Uh, I don't know exactly what's going on. So, um, yep. All right, watch this video. Elementary reactions. So, let's kind of just start here. Um, this is kind of a review of the integrated rate loss stuff. We have, uh, you know, a uh, we have a, an equation here. Uh, Dinitrogen pentaoxide goes to nitrogen dioxide and uh, and oxygen gas, and it says uh, let's see, it's placed in an evacuated tube. Reaction has occurred. We have the partial pressure and all of this. So again, pressure we can use in place of concentration uh, because we can get moles out of it. So that's all fine. Uh, and we want to know what the order of this reaction is. Hey, no worries. I don't know how to do this. So here, this is going up in a nice linear fashion, right? We're adding 100, adding 100, adding 100. So this is a nice linear increase in time. All right. So what does this guy look like? Well, I started at 150 and I decrease, which is kind of what you would expect from first order guys, or I'm sorry, for zero order guys, like this, this is decreasing by what, 75, and then decreasing by, uh, oh, so it's halving, so it's half, and then here to here is another half, and then here to here is another half. That's not a straight line. That's doing something like this. So this, it is not a, set, a zeroth order. We can cross that off the list. What's this doing? When we have ln, remember this natural log. Natural log, this is gonna be our first order. Let's see if it's first order. Uh, I'm gonna decrease by 0.7, then decrease by three, six, so that's 0.9. And then we'll decrease again by 0.9. Um, yeah, that looks pretty even, right? So this is going to be a nice straight line. Uh, here we're having, uh, no, we're, we're doubling, and then we're doubling, and then we're doubling. So first order it is. Hooray, we did it. Uh, so now we got the rate law of this guy. Rate equals K, concentration of N2O5 to the first power. All right, we got ourselves a rate law. Cool. So this is going to be kind of, uh, there's one, this is just a review of how you go about using the integrated rate law to go through and uh, find the... Um, uh, words the you know the, the the rate law and then from this you can find the slope of this using you know that distance formula uh, to get k uh, and then you at that point you've unlocked the secret of this uni uh, of this universe of this reaction 
Uh, you can answer a lot of questions about it. So here's the thing. Um, that reaction is a lie. <laughs> uh, reactions like this don't happen all at once. They take steps, right? Uh, just imagine, ima uh, imagine this, um, uh, this thing. You know, two of these molecules have to bounce together, right? Uh, this could be one step, but it might be two steps. There might be other things happening here. Um, and we can use this rate law to kind of help us figure out what these different steps are. Okay. Uh, in this case, we have this reaction. Nitrogen dioxide plus carbon monoxide goes to nitrogen monoxide and carbon dioxide. And the rate of this guy, it, rate law, is second order uh, and zero order for carbon monoxide, which means it doesn't matter how much carbon monoxide we put into it, it's not changing the rate at all. And that seems weird, right? Something's up here. So that's because this is the actual thing that's happening with this reaction. We don't have a situation where NO2 slams into CO2 and it swaps an oxygen over. That's not what's happening. This is the true thing that's happening here. Well, the first thing that has to happen is that two NO2s have to slam together. One of them gets the oxygen and then we're left with uh, nitrogen trioxide and nitrogen monoxide there. That's the step one. Then step two, we take that nitrogen trioxide and it has to slam into the carbon monoxide, leaving ourselves NO2 and carbon dioxide. And you might think, well, I mean, we don't see nitrogen trioxide anywhere in this original formula. Yeah, because you do kind of what you we've we've done in the past we cancel out things that are on both sides of the reaction and if we do that we get nitrogen dioxide carbon monoxide nitrogen monoxide carbon dioxide so this is a one potential me uh, way that this reaction could go down um, and let's see if this thing is supported by the rate law so, uh, oh, first off, there is a term called an intermediate. An intermediate. What is an intermediate? An intermediate is something that is created and used up in the reaction. This is going to be very important. Okay, It is something that is created. So NO3 is created and then used up in the reaction. Okay, It has been created and used up. So NO3 here is going to be a great example of an intermediate. This NO2 is not an intermediate. Even though it does get canceled out, much like NO3, this is not an intermediate because it was not created. It was used up and then replaced. Hopefully that helps. So intermediate has to be created, then destroyed. All right, all right. There's that. So here's the thing, each one of these steps, it's a reaction unto its own, which means it's, it has its own rate law, which means it has its own rate, uh, rate constant and all of that. So if we go through, uh, what we want to know is which one of these guys is faster and we have to remember the original rate law that we had all the way back here. Okay, it's rate equals K, NO2 squared, all right? Looking at these guys, this is the reaction that kind of uh, relates to this rate law, okay, all right? Um, so what we're saying is this guy is describing this step all right 
And now we're saying, uh, the question that I asked up here is which one is faster, okay? Um, this kind of goes back to, or uh, goes to the example, uh, an analogy of like, imagine that we're all in a, in a big assembly line, right? And, uh, you know, uh, let's say Garrett is, uh, is building one part and I am building another part. Let's say we're at a car factory and Garrett is building most of the car and then I attach the hood, or, hood, uh, hood ornament to the very top of it. Okay, it takes me about three seconds to like peel off a sticker and pop that on. Okay, now it doesn't matter how fast I go. I can be going as quickly as can be. What is going to keep us from putting out cars left, right, and center? I mean, it takes me three seconds to put a thing on there, but I don't get three seconds per car done, right? It depends on how quick Garrett is. Uh, that's the slow step of this. So we have to start thinking, which one of these is the slow step? So this, uh, this describes the entire reaction, which basically means this describes the slow step. Uh, let's say Garrett does uh you know builds a car in three hours he's amazing at building cars so he does it in three hours um how long would you say it takes both of us to complete the car three hours right it's gonna be three hours for garrett to do the thing and then i'm just gonna slap a hood ornament on it and we're, and we're done so three hours to build the car it's all garrett nothing that i did same thing here this describes the entire reaction but in truth, it's describing what this first step is doing and nothing about this. So this step is going super fast. It doesn't take hardly any time at all. And this step is our slow step. This is where all, whoop, if I can write, uh, this is the step that's taking up all of the time. All right. Burp. All right. Uh, and we know from the thing that, that CO is zeroth order, the rate is not dependent on it. Um, so the second step of the reaction doesn't really matter. All right, uh, this was a little pin passing game. Whenever I talk about this, if we're in person, I like to do a thing just to illustrate the fact that, you know, the, uh, you know, fast steps matter so it's basically like a little relay race uh one person hops on a leg one person runs with t-rex arms and one person runs while singing the national anthem which step is going to be the slowest hopping on one leg so that's the slow step right uh so that is what really determines how quickly you can get the pin from one end of the room to the other is whoever can hop on one leg the fastest uh so yeah that the hopping on one leg is our slow step t-rex arms singing the national anthem all of those are zeroth order all right so uh yep yep we, we go through and do this okay so we know k1 is fast k2 much slower um one thing that we know, you might say like, well, what is, what is, uh, you know, K2, what, what, what's going on here? Well, this reaction can only go forward based on how much NO3 you have around. And where do we get the NO3? From the slow step. Kind of think about it like this way, uh, going back to that car example. Uh, Garrett spent three hours, puts out a car, I slap a hood ornament on. I'm not going to be doing anything until I get another car uh, in front of me. So it doesn't matter how quick, quick I am. I'm just going to just sit around twiddling my thumbs until Garrett you know, works his butt off and gets, gets me another car to put a Horderman on. So um, one thing that we can think of is for this, we know that the rate of formation of NO3 is this um, is this rate, rate law. Okay. Uh, and this is one reason why uh, carbon monoxide, it doesn't matter. I could have, it doesn't matter how many hood ornaments I have. I could have a freaking box full of them. 
it doesn't matter because that's not the step uh you know that's the slow step um so this is one reason why carbon monoxide doesn't change the rate at all because it's not part of the slow step okay all right um example let's go through and talk about this all right so we have ourselves a um a thing uh, a reaction this is the experimentally determined rate law we have found the rate law there we know the balanced equation uh, and we want to propose a mechanism okay but first let's talk about something called molecularity molecularity is a fun word to say so that's fun um, so again we talked about this before that that uh, you know up here we talked about like the the NO2 and the NO2 has to hit each other in order for the oxygen to move over. This kind of makes sense. You know, I can't have an NO2 over here and an NO2 on the other side uh, swapping things. They're just not close to each other. So the thing is they have to actually hit each other. Okay. So let's go back to molecularity. In this case, it could could totally be a thing that two NO2s and one F2, two nitrogen dioxides and one fluorine molecule, all hit each other at the exact same time. Okay, think about that. Imagine if uh, we had three people and they're all throwing balls up in the air. How often would all three balls hit simultaneously? Would it happen? Sure. Not likely though. So any type of reaction step where three things have to hit is going to be a rare occurrence. That is not something that happens. Okay. And we can kind of see that to be the case here uh, because in our rate law, we don't have NO2 squared. We just have these two guys, NO2 and the fluorine go through. Um, here are just some words, some terms, and these are pretty simple if the rate law is just has one species in it uh, and um, you know one thing that changes the rate we call that unimolecular if there's two things like a to the second power or a b then we call that bimolecular by is two uh, if there's three things we call that termolecular um, yeah three things it doesn't matter if it's like a squared and b or a b and c it's all termolecular um, so yeah, those are just some terms that you can be familiar with, um, for that. All right. So that's the little tangent. Okay. So here's the thing. Um, I haven't explicitly said this, but maybe you have figured this out by now. You know, previously I said that these guys have no relation to the subscripts that is true for the entire reaction. But when we're talking about the steps, these elementary steps, yeah, the, these, sub, these uh, coefficients now matter. They now relate to these guys because what these guys are actually uh, describing the two uh, the, the, the order of the reaction. What it actually is describing is this molecularity. How many things have to hit in order for it to, um, for the reaction to go. Okay. So there's that. So now we have this experimentally determined rate law. We have this thing. So now we can start to go through and propose a step. So now we want to go through and try to predict what kind of steps are going on here. So in terms of molecularity, we know that only two things are gonna be hitting. One thing is going to be NO2, the other thing is gonna be the F2. So, because of that experimental rate law. So that's kind of what we know uh, to start with. So we have NO2 
plus F2. And what kind of intermediates is this guy going to make? Well, we know we're going to be making two of these guys. So we might make something like NO2F, one of the products. Uh, and then that just leaves F by itself. So this could be a thing. All right, so let's kind of go here and take this. And we know that this is going to be our slow step because, well, that's, that's the, uh, what the rate law is. That's what, how long it takes the, uh, to, to make the thing. Um, and then we have F. So we know F is going to be an intermediate. It's, it's going to be part of the reactant of the next step. And if we look at our original formula here, it's 2NO2. So we know it's probably going to have another NO2. And if we put this together, then that's going to be NO2F, right? And if we take everything out and put everything together, we have 2NO2 plus fluorine gas goes to 2 nitrogen dioxide fluoride. And there we go. We should now have that fully balanced reaction. Okay. Cool. Yep. And we know that this is our fast and this is our total. There we go. Um, so you can go this forwards and backwards as well. So if you had the overall and they gave you the fast, could you go through and figure out the slow? Um, sure, you, it would be possible. Uh, what you could do is you know there's going to be an NO2 here. So we can say NO2. We know we have to have one. We're going to be taking away an NO2 as well. So there has to be two NO2s. One of these is going to cancel. And then we're going to have one left over. We need a carbon monoxide in the front. We have a carbon monoxide here. So this guy looks good. Probably not one in the slow step. Uh, we know that there's going to be an NO. We don't see an NO being made in the fast step, so that means there has to be one that made in the slow step. There's a CO2 overall, and there's a CO2 in the fast step, so that's fine. And we know that there's an NO3 that gets used up in the fast step and not in the overall, so it has to be made in the slow step. And there we go. This is one way that you can go from like an overall and the second step and figure out what the first step is all about. All right. So uh, here's another little guy. Um, a good question would be, here's the, um, uh, the rate law. And the question may be, what is the um, molecularity of this? And you can say, okay, it's two and one. Three things have to be hitting at once. That's weird. It's weird, but that actually is supported by the rate law. So we can, we can say that. Now, what would the equation, uh, so if this reaction occurs in a single elementary step, that is a three-body molecular collision what is the equation for the elementary step it's this I mean it's you know um, there's two NOs we know there's has to be two of them and O2 and then this is going to all slam together to make NO2 uh, two of them and if you can double check that this actually balances out um, if you were to go through and balance this reaction, it, it all works out. So, 
that is elementary steps. This is kind of our first uh, look into something uh, about reaction mechanisms. Um, yeah, this is this is where things start getting fun um, because we can like we can see this reaction, right? But using the rate law, we can kind of look under the hood and say, wait a second, these three particles don't all slam together at the same time. You know, there's, a, there's an actual process to this, this reaction. Um, it's not just, you know, oh, the, you know, the car factory makes cars. You know, you have one person that makes the doors, one person that puts the doors on the frame, one person that builds the transmission, one person that builds the catalytic converter, and all of these processes start coming together. Um, I've been showing you some some pretty simple things. You know, basically, Garrett makes the car and I put on the hood ornament. Um, that type of example. But, but you can actually get into some more complicated things. Uh, and, and you can figure all of that out with the rate law uh, and you can start proposing um, these mechanisms uh, and this is the fun part uh, this proposing of mechanisms because you can uh, put it forth and then gather evidence for it um, it may be right it may be wrong <clears throat> um, but if you can support it with evidence basically saying that the slow step is going to be NO2 and F2 slamming into each other. That is supported by the rate law. So we know that the slow step has to be these two hitting each other. Um, and then working your wave out from there. Um, yeah, this is this is this is where it start, things start getting fun. Um, I always say that you know when I start teaching chemistry to you guys, it's like learning ABCs. This is when you start writing poetry. Um. All right, guys. Uh, that's it. I I've waxed philosophic enough. All right, guys. Uh, enjoy your Friday. Enjoy your weekend. Stay safe. Don't wear your you know definitely wear a mask. Don't go out in public uh, without a mask. Try to stay indoors as much as you can. Uh, don't make out with random strangers. Um, that for a multitude of reasons, but particularly with COVID. Uh, all right, guys. I will see you virtually on Monday.